Good morning and welcome to the Market Watch. We're going to get right into it this morning. Uh, today is Tuesday, March 13th, 2018. And I'm going to start the charts right here. Now, first we're looking at the dollar index right here. I'm going to let it run. I'm going to talk about something. I'm going to talk about I've never had such an overwhelming viewer response from my viewers talking about the Fed and this latest bond market sale that they had of $145 billion. My viewers overwhelmingly responded saying that the Fed is actually purchasing all of the bonds themselves. And listen, uh, my viewers are on top of things, really. I'm going to tell you, they really are, and they let me know. Uh, I'm I'm not ignoring this as a possibility, and this could mean everything to what's going on in this in the whole situation. Now, I've been thinking about this a lot, uh, and I think that there's a number of different possibilities, and it's not all cut and dry. First, there is a possibility that my viewers are absolutely correct, and the Fed is buying all of the bonds. <laughs> themselves completely monetizing their own debt <laughs> the debt of the country <laughs> you know i i have to laugh about it because what a devious bunch they are if that's what they're really doing but i have to explore that possibility that that is truth that all of my viewers out there are right now there's another possibility and that is that would be that the fed is buying some of the bonds and there's a third possibility that the Fed is not buying any of the bonds. That what happened is that the bond yields have risen. And because the yields have risen, the, the uh, investors out there have said, hey, you know what? Bonds are the best deal out there right now. And then the investors are actually coming in and actually buying bonds because they see them as a safe haven asset. And they see them on sale right now because they have a, a high yield and they're looking very attractive. Everybody is searching for yield. So there's those three possibilities, right? But what this really shows me, it really shows me how my audience out there, man, they're on top of stuff. And the second thing is, is they don't trust the Fed. <laughs> and I think that this is a wonderful thing that my audience does not trust the Fed. <laughs> I mean, they overwhelmingly do not trust the Fed. <laughs> I don't trust them either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, what do I think is actual truth in all of this? I hate to say it, but I don't know. There's three outcomes here. One, the Fed's buying them all. One, the Fed is buying some. And third, if the Fed's not buying any and the investors are actually coming in and buying them all because they're very attractive right now because uh, uh, because of now. Now, let's explore the, this a little bit uh, in depth. First off, if the Fed's buying them all, what's this going to do? Well, it could possibly hold the market crash off. There possibly won't be any crash if the Fed's buying them all basically monetizing their own debt. But what we're going to do is, if the, if that's true, the Fed's not going to get away with it. We're going to start heading into a hyperinflation. Everything's going to start heating up prices-wise, and they will lose control over gold and silver, if that's true. If, if they're buying, if they're completely monetizing everything right now, then it's basically over. It's It'll just be a matter of time until we're into a hyperinflation. Now, what if the Fed is buying part of the of the uh, of the treasuries, but not all? Uh, to tell you the truth, that is a scenario we need to explore too. Uh, well, it would be they would be partially uh, doing like a backdoor quantitative easing as well. But now, what if the Fed's not buying any? Let's explore that possibility, because that's a strong possibility it could be, uh, too. 
that the Fed is not buying any of them. And these are buyers that are, are, are very attractive. Bonds are very attractive right now because they're probably the best yield that's considered to be a safe haven asset because the yields went, went up on them. That's a very strong possibility. Uh, in that case, uh, the buyers are actually going to fall off. It's kind of, I'll explain it to you this way. There used to be a store out there called Blockbusters. And they used to sell movies and stuff back when VHS was the big thing, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And everybody wanted to rent a tape. So there'd be a new movie would come out, say Superman. So you go into Blockbusters to get Superman. They'd have like, they'd, they'd buy like 50 Superman tapes. And they'd all be gone. You'd be like, oh, I wanted Superman. I wanted to watch Superman this weekend. But there's no Superman left. They've taken all the tapes of Superman out. Lots of the other movies, but no Superman tapes. So everybody watches Superman that week, right? So you go back the next week, and they've got all 50 copies or 49 copies because everybody's watched it already. Everybody's got it. They watched it. And now it's old news, and they don't want to watch it again because they've all seen it, right? Uh, but that might be kind of the way it's going with these bonds. Right now, you got a lot of bond buyers could be coming in. So it might not be the Fed. It might be a lot of bond buyers actually coming in, and these look attractive to them, and they're buying them up like they buy up the Superman tapes. Next time the bond purchase comes in, there might not be any buyers to support it. We might have we might have went through all of our buyers, and they might have saturated themselves in this 145 billion. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens here. But I guarantee you this: if it's not the Fed. If it's if it's actual buyers out there buying these up because they're attractive, this is going to drop off significantly, and we're going to see a, a really a big boost in the bond price. It's going to shoot up in further in 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 the next coming up in the next sales. We're going to see a a, a big boost in it uh, in, in the in the uh, yields. Uh, the treasuries, in other words, are going to start to crash if the Fed is not purchasing them. Now, if the Fed's purchasing them, if you guys are right and the Fed's purchasing them, then we're not going to see a big crash in, in, in bonds. But we're going to start heading toward a hyperinflation. So either way, this is a crazy scenario uh, because it all relies on what the Fed's doing. And what a bunch of crooks they are. Honest to gosh, they're an awful bunch of crooks. Uh, anyway... Let's get on with the markets here. And first, what we're looking at here is the dollar. The dollar is, is dipsy doodling down a little bit today. Uh, it's taken a couple of dive, but then it's bounced back a little bit. And if we take a look at silver, we see the exact same dipsy doodle. Okay? Look at this. Boing it, a boing it, a boing it, huh? Right? In silver. That's that green line right there. Uh, and now let's take a look again at the dollar index. Boing it a boing it a boing it. The exact inverse. You can see the exact that exactly the inverse relationship right here. This is a real good one to see the exact. Uh, look at that. The down, down, and then up, up, up. And then if we take a look at silver again, up and up, up, up. It's the exact opposite. The exact inverse relationship of the dollar. Right. It's moving when the dollar's moving. Let's take a look at bonds and rates today. Um. What we're looking at is bond yields are, are down across the board, 10-year, uh, uh, except for the short short end, but mostly all the long ones, 10-year. So Let's take a look at the 10-year here. Uh, the 10-year is, is down, but not, not significantly, but it's down a little bit, okay? And so now we're going to take a look at the stock market. The stock market should be open by now. And yes, that's exactly what I'd expect. It's up 135 points. I'm going to tell you what. If the Fed really is buying all of the debt, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no end to how high the stock market could go, <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> because we would be heading into a hyperinflation. <laughs> and uh, guys like Cliff High could be absolutely correct, you know. Uh, and what we wouldn't... It could it could actually change everything, depending on what the Fed does. What can I say? Uh, 
Here, sweet like crude, down 27 cents, uh, 0.44%. So it's down a little bit, 6109. Okay, and now let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is basically just been going along. It's actually making a little bit slightly of upwards. Let me take a look at the one hour. Okay, we can see it better right here. Uh, it's price rise right now at 91.71, but it kind of put in some bottoms here around 80, 8,400. And it's been slow, slowly, a, really a squiggly line, but it's been slowly moving upwards. If you draw a line between here and here, you can see she's slowly moving upwards, trending upwards. You know, again, that's uh, that's what Bitcoin is doing. It's, tre it's very slowly trending upwards. But uh, everything, I can't get it out of my mind. Everything hinges on what the Fed's doing with these with these uh, with these sales of their. Uh, are they purchasing themselves? Uh, I I uh, I mean, it would be top secret. It would be something that they, if they really are purchasing these things themselves, they're not going to let us know, are they? I mean, this would be like a big secret that they would have to keep because all credibility would be lost. The dollar would die tomorrow if it's actually true that the Fed is monetizing all of their debt. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, this is just, uh, anyway, uh, let's see if we've covered everything. Uh, cryptocurrency market capitalizations. This is what we haven't covered. Uh, we're going to get in to take a look at this. And uh, $370 billion. Uh, now, an awful lot of them are down today. Let me take a look at Litecoin, 175 bucks. That's looking really good, you know. I got half a mind to go in and buy a few Litecoins. I'm telling you honestly, half a mind to go in and buy a few Litecoins. I just love that price, 175 bucks, because I'll tell you, uh, when they hit 350 bucks, I sold a few, you know, and I'd like to buy those few back that I sold. Uh, for 175 <laughs> that seems like a real good deal to me uh that's almost like profit taking uh but in reverse you know uh let's see see any bargains here nam is up but uh monero's down nicely too and monero is a coin that i'm very interested in uh where is our dash? There's dash 492. Oh, dash is looking good. Dash is really looking good. Uh, I can purchase uh, Litecoin directly, but I can't purchase dash directly. I have to go through an exchange. Uh, so anyway, I think I might purchase a, a few Litecoins. Uh, that's really looking very interesting to me to purchase a few of those. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next uh, show. Bye-bye.